going to be Sylvie's huge equipment review. Lots of people ask me, what's the best equipment? What gloves should I buy? What shin guards should I buy? What pads should I buy? I don't know. I can tell you what I use and what I like, and sometimes I can tell you what I like about the things I use, but I'm actually not super well versed in tons of different equipment, and the things that I look for when I'm buying equipment are not necessarily things that people are um, interested in or educated in or any of these things when they're looking for their gloves. So what I'm actually doing is I'm here at my gym in Patia at Room, and this is a real active living fighters gym. So we actually have a variety of different equipment in here. Some of it's new, some of it's old. It's kind of like when you see a person who all their tattoos are the same age. It's a little bit weird. If you go into a gym and all their equipment is brand new, it's like a brand new gym. It's weird. Uh, but we have stuff that's older and newer and different um, companies and things like that. So I'm going to do kind of a equipment review in the gym. A lot of our stuff comes from Woody Muay Thai because they sponsor the gym. So they give us equipment. So I will be talking about them quite a bit because a lot of our equipment is Woody, but they're also a really good company. So I'll talk about why their stuff is really nice to have in the gym as well. Um, so just starting out, I just got new pads for Pinu um, over at the Woody shop. Again, they sponsor us, so they gave us these. I'm gonna show you what their uh, pads look like. This is why we asked for a new pad for Pinu is that this part is starting to come undone and uh, these are pretty old. Pinu goes through pads in a pretty significant way because he holds for like 10 people per day, four rounds per person. So this is like 40 rounds per day. So these are getting slammed a lot. One of the things you have to look for when you're buying pads is these are real leather, which is nice, which means that they last for a really long time. When they break open like this, the part that's peeling right here, this doesn't hurt when you kick it because when it cracks open from being in the sunlight, it gets really hard when it starts to peel away and these edges will become really painful. So when it peels and peels back on itself because of sunlight, because it gets really dry, that's painful. When it splits open because it's been hit so many times and it's kind of like soft and smashed down on the edges, that actually doesn't hurt so much to keep kicking it, which is really nice. One of the things about these pads that's a consideration for my trainers, not the kind of thing I think about because I don't hold pads for people, is that they're quite heavy. So again, it's real leather, they're pretty sturdy. So these can be held for much bigger fighters who are kicking pads. So when Kruenu is thinking about what pads he's gonna get or which ones he's gonna use with who he's holding pads for, often what he's considering is how heavy is that pad. So you want a heavier pad if you have bigger, like heavier weight fighters. He also has lighter pads, uh, they weigh less. Here's one over here. So this is a Venom pad. This is that like kind of hard peeling thing that I was talking about. This is a really light pad. So if you're gonna be holding rounds for someone who's smaller bodied, Often, Krunu will say that when he's holding pads for kids or for women, he'll use the lighter pads because it doesn't tire his arms as much and they don't kick as hard. I protest because I'm both small and a woman. <laughs> he uses the really heavy pads with me and he says it doesn't count because I kick hard, which I find very flattering, that's very nice. But so, your arms are something to think about in the pads that you're picking. If you pick really heavy pads, you're holding heavy pads. If you pick really light pads and someone who you're holding for is a very strong kicker or very heavy, they might not have the weight to like resist that person's kick and they can like smack up into your head. So very light, heavy. Um, again, what I was saying that's nice about the woody pads is that they last a really long time and when they start to fall apart because of the leather when it's like this, you can actually do like a patch of leather on here to fix it. Equipment that's easy to fix if you have that available to you, is really good. So these pads were brought by uh, someone who's training at the gym he had and he brought for our trainers. These are Boone. Boone is another brand that lasts a really, really long time because they're made from real leather. I don't know if this is all of their pads or if it was the pads that Andy Thompson was using up in Chiang Mai. He always used Boone, but they have rubber inside. <laughs> So if you live in a cold climate or if you have cold weather at times in the seasons or whatever, that rubber gets really hard and these pads hurt when it's cold. This is something to think about 
you're like training in the East Coast or something. Um, but in talking about repairability, repairing real leather is something that you can do. There are these pads over here that are kind of, this is actually two pads that have been stitched together. So they use the back of a woody pad and then they use the front of a different pad and they like um, Frankensteined putting it together because these are a little bit harder to fix. Like the front of this one is harder to repair. So they just use the back of another pad in order to do that. So if you can repair your equipment, something to think about is, is it repairable or not? Um, real leather like this is pretty repairable. Something that I think about as a kicker um, or as someone who's kicking pads rather than holding pads is the actual shape of it. So if you look at the, um, if you look at the shape of this one, the dent in this one, that slightly exists when you buy it, not a whole lot. It becomes more as you're kicking it. And this is actually really nice as a kicker to not hit edges. There are no real like sharp edges on these pads, which I like because it hurts to hit an edge. These ones people have actually complained about. I don't see a hard edge on here, but because it's really narrow, you can, depending on your pad holder, how they're holding it, because it's narrow, you might end up kicking on the edge of this. So if you're buying equipment for your gym, you also need to think about the experience of your trainers, how experienced they are holding pads. Um, if they're gonna be kind of having a harder time keeping super consistency, the edge of your pads is gonna be really important uh, as one of the things that you think about. So this is a very well-worn, probably, I'd say maybe eight months, this pad, uh, to get to this point. And then this is what they look like when they're brand new. These are the ones that I picked up for Pinu to replace those. Uh, pretty good. One of the things you have to think about is the Velcro on here tends to wear down, which is actually my next point about belly pads. So we have belly pads of all different brands right here. Belly pads last pretty much forever. They're really solid equipment in terms of like, the front part will do its job for a really long time. The reason you have to replace a belly pad or the reason your belly pad stops working for you is actually the Velcro and the straps in the back. That's easy to fix, which is nice. But, um, let's see if I can find one. So you can see, this is something that uh, is a sign of the quality of pads as well. Like with the woody pad, how it started to peel in the front, like this is totally normal wear. Uh, especially from being in the sun and things like that on leather equipment. But when it starts to bust at the seams, that's really hard to fix and that's something that um, is gonna get you like uh, filler and all kinds of stuff all over your ring as they're starting to fall apart. Again, this is split. It's still functional, but it's not gonna stay on the pad holder very well anymore um, because everything's kind of worn out. So. This little piece of string here shows that the pad holder who's been using this, when he puts it on, he then ties it to itself to keep it on uh, because the Velcro and the straps aren't working anymore. So look at the straps of your equipment in order to know how long it's gonna last. Um, for gloves, these are my gloves that I use all the time. I've had these for almost a year now um, you can see that they're, this is mostly because I dry them in the sun, that they're starting to smash here. For me, the first part that goes on gloves 99% of the time is right here um, on the wrist. I don't know if that's from pulling them on or if that's from blocking and having people kick on that point, but this little piece of um, padding that goes right on the wrist, this comes out of gloves as like the first thing that fucks your gloves um, for me in Thailand. Um, I only wear gloves when I'm hitting pads. I don't wear gloves on the bag. I guess I wear them when I'm sparring. Um, but so my, my gloves don't get as much use as someone who probably in the US is wearing them for everything that they do. Um, for gloves, the thing that I like or dislike, it's not necessarily something I like look for in gloves or don't look for in gloves, but the thing that I like or dislike is the hand compartment because I have small hands so if it has a really roomy front compartment, it doesn't feel good on my hand. It feels like it's um, in like a helmet that's too big and it's like bobbling around. Uh, people who have big hands and those people exist, you might wanna pay attention to having a bigger hand compartment for your comfort. 
I only use lace up. The reason I use lace up is because Velcro scratches yourself, your teammates, <laughs> your trainers. Uh, I don't like being scratched by Velcro and it's actually an infection risk in Thailand. So I always use lace up. I also have very small wrists so I can get my gloves tighter with the lace up. Uh, when I'm trying to use Velcro, I have to like super pull it and then I have excess on the tab that's extra Velcro that's gonna be hurting someone. I've had these for almost a year. They're still in really good condition. Like I still uh, use them every day and I haven't had any kind of like structural on the inside part problem with the padding, although they are starting to get a little old here. Um, an aesthetic thing that you should think about when looking at gloves, because everyone likes these really interesting patterns on gloves. Um, <laughs> It's, kind of, it's like how you buy wine because of the label or something. Um, people totally buy gloves because of what the pattern is and companies know this. So companies are coming up with weirder and more interesting, uh, you know, like joker coloring or something on their um, gloves. When you get two-tone or something like this, this color is the color of the leather. So this is going to be durable in and of itself for a really long time. Something that happens when you get really sexy gloves that have like a dragon on them or like uh, cartoons on them or some kind of print. The problem with printed gloves, I'll show you, is that the part that makes it so pretty and colorful is actually just a film. It's a very thin film like this that has that pattern on it that gets put on the glove. These are my Fairtex shin guards, so we'll move into shin guards. I love these. They're small, I'm small, and the way that they strap is with this metal part right here. So you just take the strap, it goes around and it folds on itself. This is really good for me because I'm small and these are small, they're narrow, and they fit around my calf in a nice way. So I don't have to adjust them all the time. There are, I'll show you some other shin guards that are in here um, and I'll show you the the opposite of this, which is if you have really big calves, you need kind of a wider um, front part. That doesn't help small people because they're constantly slipping to the side. So while I'm making a point about the like facade of this falling apart and kind of, I think the beautiful red leather of this lasted maybe two weeks. <laughs> These fall apart really fast, structurally, functionally, these are really good shin guards. They functionally have stayed really strong and they're not super heavy, which I really like. I don't, I don't like heavy shin guards. Um, so in terms of functionality and uh, shin guards that are doing the job they're supposed to do, really like them. In terms of like, I bought these for the pattern and it's peeled off after two weeks, not my favorite. So think about why you're buying the gloves. If you really like the pattern, um, pay attention to the fact that anything that's like super awesome looking is actually just uh, paint on top, basically. Um, another thing I really like about these is that they have the strap that goes under your foot, but they do not have the strap that goes around the back of your ankle. That gets stretched out super fast and becomes annoying almost immediately. <laughs> so I like that they're missing that part. And Fairtex and Boone both make shin guards that look pretty much like this. Um, Andy Thompson, my trainer up in uh, Chiang Mai when I first came, uh, unfortunately he's passed on, he cut the foot off of his. So that's an option um, on this kind of shin guard as well. Although the connection, because it's full, rather than some of them have like a gap right here to make it more flexible, this stays intact for longer, which I think is really nice. Um, this is a piece of equipment that not everyone's gonna have, which is fine but I'll contrast these two. This one is heavy. I think they call it like a suitcase bag. It's for kicking. This one's really heavy. It's real leather. It has these nice like um, sides that I was talking about so that you're not kicking angles. This lasts really well. And as I said, it creates dents the more you kick it. So by creating a dent in a certain spot, it's actually protecting your leg the more you do it. Um, and you're less likely to, as you're sweating and you're very wet and you're hitting something that's leather, your skin is affected by that. Like you can peel your skin um, on bags and things like that because of how much you sweat. The other one, this one's woody. This one is actually heavier than the woody one, but the reason Pinu really likes this is because it has more straps on the back. So he's able to hold it at um, 
many different angles, whereas this one has more or less the same strap edge, except it's missing this, this one down at the bottom. So it kind of has to stay upright for the most part. This one is from Decathlon, which is like a sport mega store. Um, you can get anything there. But the thing that I don't like about this, unfortunately, Pinu, Pinu really likes this one. He's happy with this one, so we use it a lot. The edges on this one are way more likely for you to be banging like a weird sharp edge. And because you can't dent it, like the, the leather of this one, you're hitting a more or less flat surface that makes your kick as you're tired or whatever, it kind of goes wonk and it goes in different areas. You might slide on it a little bit and that's when you start scraping your skin, which is what I was talking about before. So you might hit angles, like you might hit these edges and you might be hurting yourself on the flatness of it. You don't have to cry about it, it's not that big a deal. It's just things to think about, like very small things. Um, so, We'll come out and look at bags real quick. Um, almost, almost all of our bags are woody because they were given to us by Woody. Um, they're really nice leather, like they're they're really good quality leather. Um, the thing about your bag is that if you get it unfilled, what kind of bag you end up with is what you fill it with. So if you fill this with light stuff, you have a really nice leather bag that's light. We fill it with what's basically like really long strips of rags and they're actually quite heavy and hard. We've had people like Karahat and Dieselnoy complain about how hard our pads, our bags are and I laughed because they like, are some of the baddest ass like hard training people ever and they thought that our bags were too hard. I'm totally used to them. These are our bags. So when I go somewhere where the bags are light, I'm like your bags are too fluffy. So when you buy a bag, what you think about is its durability. In terms of its heaviness or hardiness or whatever, that's up to you. That's what you fill it with, basically. So we have this like middle-sized one. You can see that they kind of get flattened out. This is from kicking it. So it was round when we first started, and then the people kicking the sides end up flattening out those two sides. The reason that happens is because this thing is not 360. So the bag can turn but more or less it's gonna stay in one position most of the time. And so the denting that I was talking about that's actually really good on real leather, that denting becomes more and more permanent because of how the bag moves, which is something you have to think about, um, especially while you're kicking it. If I am kicking this and not paying attention to where the flat parts are, and I kick this side, it becomes a little bit painful, um, which just reinforces that this is gonna be the part that's kicked more and more, and it becomes flatter and flatter as we go. Um, you can see we have like kind of smaller ones over there. Um, those are our lightest bags, but again, because of how we fill them, they're not that light. Um, and then this teardrop one, something to think about is it's really nice leather. Um, but when we first filled it, we didn't pack it hard enough at the bottom. And so the insides kept shifting, but because we didn't pack it all the way down first, it had um, basically air pockets in what it was filled with and we were hitting it and we were using it as a knee bag over there to begin with, now we punch it. But when we first had it, it was a little bit lower and it was for knees. So the air pockets were down here and we were kneeing it all the time on the air pockets and that's why it split, is because it wasn't full yet. So something you need to think about when you have really nice, expensive, new leather equipment is how you fill it and whether you have air pockets and when you start using it, you might actually be damaging it by not thinking ahead, you really have to pack it down. Good advice. Um, we'll go into this room. At my gym, we have a lot of shared equipment. Like the, the Thai boys all use the same shin guards on each other. We don't really have like, I have my own equipment because I don't like, I don't like other people's smells on my stuff, but we share equipment. So we have a little variety of shin pads here. These are super um, inexpensive, light. It's basically a sock that has padding in it. People who fight amateur in like IFMA or something might be familiar with these because this is what you fight in. Um, this is standard at IFMA. The things to think about with these is that they smell so bad really fast and they stretch out. Um, when these stretch out, you cannot use them anymore. Like it, 
they become non-functional in the way that a slouchy sock won't stay on you. These don't stay on you. And even though they have like a tightening strap, this only goes around the top. And it's basically like if you had a gross old tube sock that you just put a piece of tape on the top, that's <laughs> trying to keep it on with that. Um, but I've seen also uh, pad holders wear that under a regular shin pad. So they kind of like double up on it. Um, we have All right, so these were actually given to me by uh, Sean Fagan from Not Moy Nation. He was a sponsor of mine before, um, and he was like, can I send you some shorts? And I said, the kids at my gym share shin guards. It'd be great if you sent some. He sent like three pairs. It was really, really nice. Um, the kids actually really like these. Uh, the kids at my gym pick these ones a lot. We also have a, um, a black pair. Um, but what I was talking about with my shin guards, these are really broad. You see how wide this is? If you have big calves, this is really good for you. If you have small calves like me, this is a nightmare because they twist all the time. But the shin guards I use that I showed you over there, people with bigger calves can't use them. Like they can't even close them. And if you can't close your Velcro, it's not gonna stay on you. I prefer this style that, um, that Not Moy Nation has where you thread it through and it comes back on itself like this. Um, again, if, you're, if your calves are too big, it's not going to stay with this style, and so you'd want the two that fold over like this. But the style where they fold over like this um, tend to deteriorate faster and scratch people easier than this type. And another thing that's really nice about these is that they're not heavy. These are super, super light, so when you're like kicking people, you don't have like a big, heavy piece of equipment on you. This is what our trainers use. This is the style I was talking about with the like... Um, two sides folding over each other. This, I don't know, you're at least sharing the weight on each side of these so they tend not to have one side come off. That style has one side come off quite often. Um, this is just another option. In terms of the narrowness of the front, this is really nice because it keeps the feeling of kicking things pretty accurate and narrow, um, but it's not for super wide um, calves and shins. See how it's like it's not flexible, it's pretty structured. So you have like a super structured piece like that. Um, I had a pair that I wanted to show you that are um, bleeding edge. They were given to me by Tim Muzzin, um, bleeding edge shin guards. And they're a little bit similar to this in that they have the like gauntlet style front. Um, but Chicken Man, who's our trainer, loves these. <laughs> Tim gave them to me and they were too tall for me. Like the, um, the top of them came up pretty much to the top of my knee. So it was like I was walking around in like gladiator shin guards. Um, but Chicken Man, who's got really fat calves, he's like stocky and strong. He loves the bleeding edge shin guards. He grabbed them right away, which is probably where I can't find them is that he stashes them so that he's the one who uses them. Uh, but that's a good brand if you're like a, a strong beefy dude. Um, what I said about my shin guards, how this part the, could be cut off, this has kind of a like um, not strong foot connection and so this part becomes kind of wonky pretty early on some pads that get really like burned out. Um, these, are, these are what I use for sparring. These are bleeding edge and Tim Muzzin made these for me. They have my signature on them. Um, the thing that's really nice about these is that what I was complaining about about the Velcro, this style of how he does the Velcro, how it's the thread through, which is the same as the shin guards, this actually solves that problem in a really nice way because the um, scratchy part is fixed. The scratchy part is not the part that you pull across. The scratchy part is the part on the bottom. So if this part is too long or if this part comes up, you're not gonna hurt anyone with that. This is the part that sticks down onto the Velcro there. That's solid, solid design there. I really like that. Um, and I use these gloves for um, sparring. And I like how kind of long this front part is. He has this special design where like, there's kind of a built up part on the hand. I think the idea is because you're like blocking with it and so you're like getting extra pad for your wrist as people are kicking you in the head. Um, 
I don't know from experiencing the glove whether that makes a difference, but it looks cool. So I like that and I think that's the reason behind it for those. Um, and I think that's it. We have, we have headgear. Have headgear that I'll show you just because people wear headgear. But we have headgear that's from FBT is a Thai company that's what you would see in a lot of like uh, tournaments and things like that. They're a pretty big company. Um, we don't use headgear in our sparring or anything like that unless someone already has a cut or something like this. Sun was wearing these uh, the other day because he had cut his eyelid. Um, in sparring a little while ago and he's just protecting that but we don't use it in terms of a, like wear headgear to <laughs> protect your head while we're sparring. Um, the thing that I know about wearing headgear in my various experiences of training and fighting with it is that um, the, the part that goes on the cheeks totally obstructs your visibility based on how it fits. So when you're picking your headgear um, I like the ones that have a bar that go across the nose because that's a part I'd really like to protect if I'm not great at protecting it. But the cheek pad parts um, totally obstruct your vision uh, in a pretty consistent way <laughs> on these ones. Um, and the full open ones like this um, are what they use at Dejrat and they wear headgear for sparring quite often. So that's the one that they pick. Um, that's my equipment review walking through Petra and Rung. Those are the things that I think about and know about how equipment is thought about, uh, decided upon, and purchased here. Um, and if you guys have suggestions, recommendations, equipment you like, go to my Muay Thai forum. It's eightlimbsus.com Muay Thai forum with dashes in between. You can totally put up what your favorite brand is, ask questions about them, that kind of thing. Talk about it over there because you get all kinds of people who have different experiences talking about it there and that's really good. So thank you guys for watching.